Okay, I know it's Lou. So they've just announced who's coming back to direct Saw 10, Jigsaw 2, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. It's actually announced, it's confirmed that Kevin Goddard, who edited the first five Saw movies, directed Saw 6, forced to direct Saw 2 Vegas as well, edited Jigsaw is returning to direct the next Saw movie which will be set between Saw 2 and Saw 3. Pretty crazy. Yeah, is what he said. Uh, I messaged him on Facebook and I asked him, uh, you know, is this like legit? And he's like, um, he writes back, pretty crazy, isn't it? And I sent him a video saying, Is this true? crazier than a sack full of cats and he replies that's some deep soul lore right there and a lot of soul fans will understand the reference whenever Matt Gibson first meets Jill the first comment he makes about her is Jesus she looks crazier than a sack full of cats so yeah that's pretty cool don't really know much about this new soul film uh, Apart from the fact it's meant to be set between the second and third summaries and it's meant to like move away, it's not going to be like directly tied to the, to the events of the second and third films. It's going to be standalone, the same way Jigsaw was standalone, but loosely connected to the first seven movies. The film is going to specifically focus on John Kramer, Jigsaw. It's going to be about him and it's kind of been built that, you know, this is going to be Tobin's last Saw film. I would rather they had this new Saw film set between Saw 1 Saw 2 and then another Saw movie set between Saw 3 and Saw 3. But I suppose with the type of story they want to tell, maybe it fits better between the Saw 2 3 timeline. And um, like Tobin Bell's 80 now. He's 80. I mean, we don't know how much he has left in him. Could he do an Saw awesome movie after this one here? Would it be interesting? I'd say it'd be interesting. But, you know, the guy's old. So if they're going to bring him back, do it justice and put an end to the character's arc and then focus on Spiral. That being said, as I said before, because of the timeline, it's possible Dr. Gordon, Amanda Young, Mark Hoffman may appear in this, may not. Logan Nelson could show up in it, don't know. We just know that Tobin Bell's coming back. This Saw film has been in development since the release of Jigsaw. They were actually going to move on to it and start filming it, but instead Chris Rock approached the producers about his idea for Spiral, and they decided to go along with that and got Darren and Basman back to direct it. And <clears throat> if it hadn't been for Chris Rock, we would have had this song with me by now. It's probably, I, I liked Spiral, I did. I know a lot of people don't, but I really did enjoy it. Not the best song movie, not the worst ever, but it was the best one. It was definitely, definitely better than Saw 3D and Jigsaw. A lot better, you know. And it was great that they got Darren and Weissman back because even though it, it looked different, it still looked similar and felt like the Saw movies that we all know and love. Uh, whereas Jigsaw just felt like a fan made movie put together and was made canon. <clears throat> For those who don't know, um, after Saw 6 came out, Paranormal Activity came out as well and beat Saw 6 at the box office. It earned all the money that uh, Saw 6 didn't. and. And then it was announced that Paranormal Activity 2 was happening and what they did, they decided to hire Kevin Gordon to direct Paranormal Activity 2. Before that there, uh, Lionsgate decided to get David Hackle, who directed Saw 5, which again wasn't particularly a good Saw movie. He was to direct Saw 3D originally and they spent I think 9 months in development and pre-production and right before filming they fired him and forced Kevin Gordon back even after paying uh, David Hackett's tuition fees to study uh, 3D in film. So this meant that they put a contractual clause in Kevin Gordon's contract. They put a clause in Kevin Gordon's contract uh, where he legally had to leave Paramount to Victory and direct Saw 3D, I guess, as well. So imagine that, you know, you've just, uh, imagine you're David Hackle and you spent nine months developing a script uh, <clears throat> you've got the set built, you've got all your actors cast, and a few days time filming is going to begin. And then you're told you're being let go. 
because uh, Paranormal Activity and Stuff TV were going to be released on the same day as each other. That was the old fuss. And because Paranormal Activity 1 beat Saw 6, and because uh, Saw 6 was better than Saw 5, a lot better, and the British just didn't like that. And they decided to uh, switch the directors around. So, if you're David Hacker, you know, and you're being like, somebody, you have to watch somebody else make your movie. And you know, whenever you're in Kevin Gordon's position, you know, he wanted to move on from Saul and the Prime Wars every two. And he basically had to go and shoot this movie that somebody else had spent the last nine months prepping. You know, so he and, he and the writers, Marcus Dawson and Pat did attempt a compressive rewrite, but I think there was only so much they could do because everything was already in place. It was too late to make any changes. They would have been better off just delaying the film by a year and let Kevin Gordon start from scratch. You know, because I, I, I personally prefer David, I personally liked Kevin Gordon's directing compared to David Hackles. Um, not nothing against David Hackle, but you know, I just prefer Kevin's way of uh, making up so really. Um, <clears throat> so. That's why Saw 3D looks like an absolute mess. You know, it was sloppy, the acting was off, the blood was pink. You know, it was a true, it, it was almost like a parody of a Saw movie. It was an abomination to the franchise and it made it calm. Uh, there's a lot of things I could say about Saw 3D. And I, God, it really is an embarrassment to the franchise and it makes all the old ones look bad. You know, it started off great with the first movie and then by Saw 3D it's like a complete shit show and no fault of Kevin's at all, not his fault. You know, he had, he had no choice, he had to go and make this movie. He did try, he did try in parts, you know, to make it as good as he could, but um, there was only so much he could do. Uh, he even said, you know, if he had been involved in the film from the start, things would be very different. There was a lot of uh, decisions with the storyline and the characters that he would not have went and done had he been there from the start, <clears throat> but it was too late to change anything, you know. But uh, he's coming back like to direct another song of and that's this is gonna be exciting. This is interesting. This is good because he would be a fan favorite, either him or Darren Bryson. They're the top two guys to come back and make song of You know, James Wan moved on. He doesn't want to go back to song. He's done with it. October twenty twenty three is the release of the new song of so it looks like they're going back to the traditional way where every song of was released uh, around Halloween in October. So, this is going to be good. Uh, Josh Goldberg and Pete Goldfinger are trying as the screenwriters. They've had plenty of time to work on this new script and they're very excited to see this come onto the screen. And I'm looking forward to it as well. They haven't, they don't, it appears to me that they didn't get to, you know, write the scripts the way they wanted to. Same way the Spirit Brothers, you know, felt like hired guns on Jigsaw. So, hopefully, with this song, we and we're going to get a lot more in depth to the storyline, the characters, and it's going to be so as we know and love. I think that's all I have to say. <laughs>